This video is going to cover the difference between persuasion and argument. And you can read over here in the title. And I also want to give Mike McGuire here credit that I am taking one of his PowerPoints because I think it's very good. It gets to the, the meat of the problem or the issue. And uh, I just want to give him credit for this video. Okay, or for the content of the video. First here, persuasion versus argument. A lot of people use these interchangeably. However, to me, argument goes one step further. Argument includes persuasion, but argument also involves bringing in the other side, bringing in the opposing view. You're not trying to hide anything. You're giving evidence from both sides. For example, persuasion. Let's say that I think Maya Angelou I'm going to compare and contrast Maya Angelou to Harper Lee. I'm going to compare and contrast. I'm trying to persuade you that the way I'm comparing and contrasting makes sense. That's persuasion. However, instead of comparing and contrasting Maya Angelou and Harper Lee, if I decide to say Maya Angelou is a better author than Harper Lee, then I'm going to give facts supporting, yes, Maya Angelou is better. However, one step further, instead of just persuading, I'm going to bring in an argument. I'm going to bring in the evidence for the opposing view for those people who believe that Harper Lee is a better author. So I'm not trying to hide anything. And this term's argument doesn't mean you're screaming or yelling. You're going to present the evidence of both sides in a nice, formal manner. So again, persuasion, you're just going to list. I'm going to compare and contrast. I'm going to persuade you that my comparison and contrast of Maya Angelou and Harper Lee is factual. However, if I change the thesis or the topic sentence and say Maya Angelou is a better author than Harper Lee, now I'm going to bring in an argument because I'm saying one is better than the other. List my ideas, which we'll go over for Maya Angelou. Making this an argument, we're going to bring in evidence of why people would think Harper Lee is a better author. Okay? And then here, the argument is basically based on logic and reasoning, logos. However, I do feel that pathos can come into play in an argument, especially if you are writing about something and you know somebody was gone through or can be used as a personal example for your support. However, the books will say argument should really just be logic and no pathos. However, I'm saying that it is okay to bring in a little pathos. This slide is just talking about the importance of the two. So you can read these over, but the one I really want to look at is academic life. So that's what you're doing. You're writing academically. Example, an essay. Who's a better author, Maya Angelou or Harper Lee? Then you would write that about, defend your ideas. And again, since it's an argument, bring in the other side, the opposing views. What would people say? You know what? I disagree with you. Maya Angelou isn't better than Harper Lee. Then you would want to bring in the Harper Lee ideas as well or evidence. So what exactly is an argument? I, I think the gentleman who made this PowerPoint made a, an error here, but an argument involves providing logical reasoning, examples, and research. I said this before, and persuasion is more pathos. And here, I really think he needs argument, and argument is mostly logos. Can you have logos in a persuasion? Yes, exactly, for sure. I think that logos or logic or facts will trump pathos most of, most of the time because facts you really can't argue with. Pathos are more of your feelings and personal examples. So again, I think you made a mistake here. And so to review this argument, logical reasoning examples, persuasion, more patho pathos. Persuasion does have logos in it, but I would put the word argument here, which is mostly logos. That way, when you guys write your research papers for me, you're going to use mostly logos and you're going to get your information or your facts from, <clears throat> excuse me, a database, a peer reviewed database, which we'll go over later. Okay, and so what do we need for an argument? I've kind of touched on these, but I will. So you need an open issue to debate. Make sure it's something debatable. Don't say something that you can't debate. The sky is blue. Well, you can't really debate that. So make it, it's very simplistic, but make it something that is very dateable. 
debatable. Okay, your position on the issue is your claim that will come through in your thesis statement. You give your support. Look here, you're talking about experience, which is good. And remember, argument, experience to me would be pathos. And then uh, expert opinion, research, and statistics would be the logos. Okay, acknowledgement, you want to bring in the counter argument, the opposing views. That's what separates this, again, from a persuasion or persuasive essay. And then you want to explain, you want to bring in the other viewpoints, the opposing viewpoints, but then you also want to refute those. You want to spin it back to why your, your stance or your claim is stronger than the other, your position is stronger. So, for example, uh, my Angelou to me is the best author. However, let's bring in a point, Harper Lee. Harper Lee won a, I'm not sure if this is true, I'm just giving you. However, opposing views would say that Harper Lee is a better author because she won a author's award. Good. Give that fact, say, well, she won the award and blah, 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 what year, da, 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 da. But then again, you want to refute and say, however, although she won this award, comma, Maya has won more awards. So you're bringing in the view, then you're refuting it, you're spinning it back to make Maya's point better. I'm going to go over this later. Sometimes uh, maybe Harper Lee, let's say, for example, Harper Lee won more literary awards. Sometimes we just have to concede and say, Yes, she has won more awards than Maya Angelou, and that's okay. We have to give that point to them, but the rest of the essay will bring it back to Maya and saying, look, although Harper Lee had more literary awards, Maya has also accomplished this, blah, 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 truly making her the best author. So sometimes you have to concede or say, yes, in this instance, Harper Lee is stronger. The opposing view is stronger. Don't try to hide anything because if you try to hide anything in an argument, you're going to lose your power or your credibility as the author. Because if someone's reading it and they're like, oh, they're leaving this fact out to protect themselves, then you just lost your audience. You lost your credibility. Okay, so this slide kind of piggybacks on what I just said about know your audience. What do they know about it? How much information do you need to give? If you're writing a paper about something on neuroscience, if I'm reading it and you know that I'm a lay person, I'm going to need a lot of facts. So what they're saying is give enough background information or context that your audience knows what's going on. Also, <clears throat> excuse me. This point three here, are they open minded enough to consider other views? It's OK. You need to bring in the other side if you're doing an argument. Will there be objections to your argument? There probably will, because if there weren't objections to an argument, is your thesis really debatable? If everybody will agree on your thesis, it's not really debatable. Therefore, I don't think it's a good argument thesis to use. So remember, make sure it's something debatable, something people will definitely disagree on or about. Okay, how are you going to structure your essay? It's very similar to a persuasive essay or any other essay that we've written. So you're going to have your introductory paragraph, give background information, and then in the introductory paragraph, you'll want to put the thesis, the thesis statement or the claim. It's usually the last sentence of a introductory paragraph. Okay, give background information if it's needed. If not, skip that paragraph and jump right into body paragraphs, giving your reasons and your evidence, and make sure every body paragraph has a topic sentence for my classes, or I, I'll, I won't give you points for it. And then you'll have to oppose and refute. Bring in the opposing view and refute it or spin it back to your side. I have another video that will show you different ways that you can bring different ways that you can put together an argumentative essay, different formats. But remember, just remember, you have to argue and refute, bring in the opposing and refute if it's going to be argument argumentative. And then obviously you want your conclusion, your conclusion paragraph. Okay, in my other video about the helpful hints for writing, the one that you should have a copy of and use in every class, this is what a thesis statement should be. It should be uh, debatable. Do not hear, this is the part I'm really, it is not a factual statement. If it's a fact, it can't be a thesis statement. It's a fact, it would be used as evidence instead. It's not an announcement in this paper or the purpose of this paper is do not do that. However, if you want to state that this paper is about blah, 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 do that, but then go back and delete this paper is about, okay? So make sure the thesis statement 
is clear. Do not make it an announcement. Do not use we, you, I. It's not necessary unless I, if the research paper or the argument prompt is about you personally, then it's okay to use I there. Okay, if you want to pause and read these three bullets, but I'm gonna just talk about them as though you have read them already. So number one is a fact. It's a clear fact. It cannot be a thesis statement. Number three, this paper will describe a V-chip. This is an announcement. This is not a proper thesis. You could reword it and get rid of this paper we'll describe, but let's take a look at number two. Let's see if this is a good argument thesis. To help parents monitor their children's viewing habits, the V-chip should be required feature for television sets sold in the U.S. Here should be required. So some people will say, yes, it should be required. Other people will say, no, it should not be required. So this person is pro, should be V-chips. So pro V-chips, con would be people who don't think that V-chips should be required. So then here, the pro V-chip, give all the evidence for that. The con or the opposing view would be people who do not believe V-chips. So this thesis statement is very, very clear.